Hello and welcome back to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. Uh, today we're going to be going over cash dividends. Now every once in a while a corporation may decide to distribute some of its earnings to its shareholders and we call these dividends. Um, they can happen frequently such as every quarter or a corporation may decide to never distribute a dividend. So it really depends on the company. Um, however, our focus today is on analyzing these types of problems and completing the journal entries for them. Um, so there are, uh, in this case, we have XYZ Corporation that is announcing or declaring that it will be paying a 50 cent per share dividend on its 200,000 outstanding shares on November 15th. However, the actual payments are not going to occur until December 15th. Um, so when you're thinking about dividends, keep in mind that there are three important dates. Um, the first date, which in this case will be on November 15th, is the date of declaration. This is essentially the day that the company announces that they will be giving out a dividend. Um, the second important to date is the date of record. Now on the date of record, this is usually about the halfway point between the first date and the third date. Um, and anyone who owns the shares as of that date will be getting the dividend. And your last date is the date of payment. And this is essentially, as the name uh, suggests, it is the date that the dividend will actually be paid. So let's take a look at each of these dates and then see what the journal entry will be for each of those. So on the date of declaration, which is November 15th, XYZ Corporation is going to be declaring that it's giving a 50 cent per share dividend on its 200,000 shares. So let's think about what journal entries might be necessary. One, we, are, we know that we are giving out a cash dividend, and that is actually the first account that is going to be affected here. Now, uh, keep in mind, follow through the rules that you learned earlier in your accounting academic career. Um, essentially, when cash dividends go up, you have to ask yourself, what type of account is cash dividends? And cash dividends is actually a contra capital account. So in order for a contra capital account to go up, we have to debit that account. So cash dividends will be our debit in this entry and that puts the cash dividends into being. Um, now on the date of declaration we're not actually paying these cash dividends so we owe them. Now think what type of accounts owe those are liabilities so we are going to be doing cash dividends payable. Now for the amount we're saying that it's 50 cents per two per share when there are 200,000 outstanding shares. So that is actually just going to be 100,000, but I'll put in the math just so you can visualize that. So 50 cents for every share, and there's 200,000 shares, that gives us a $100,000 dividend. All right, so that's your first entry. Now, for those of you who are using um, different types of textbooks, I do encourage you to open up your textbook and see uh, and ensure that your textbook uses cash dividends for that debit. Um, some textbooks will simply use uh, dividends, but more importantly, some textbooks use retained earnings instead of cash dividends. So definitely be sure to clarify with your instructor or take a closer look at your notes and your textbook to ensure that cash dividends is being used rather than retained earnings. All right, so our second date is the date of record. Now on the date of record, all this date is doing is collecting the data on who is going to be getting uh, the dividend. So remember, shares of stock are constantly being tra traded amongst different shareholders. So um, sometimes somebody might decide to sell their stock after the date of declaration and therefore the new owner who owns it as of the date of record, they are going to be the ones that are entitled to that dividend. So on the date of record, that actually doesn't change any of the actual data in our accounts. Um, it doesn't change uh, any monetary amounts, so there is actually no change to any accounts whatsoever. So on the date of record, there is actually no journal entry. So for that one, you actually just leave it blank. We can move on to our third date now, our date of payment. Obviously now we are paying something. So let's think of how this is going to affect our cash dividends payable. 
Now that we are finally paying off this dividend, our cash dividends payable is going to go down. Cash dividends payable, which is a liability. So we debit to decrease it. And keep in mind, this is the date of payment. So what account gets affected when we pay? Cash. So cash, the asset, is going to be decreased with a credit. Other than that, that's pretty much the whole thing. You might want to look into what outstanding shares mean. There might be a little bit of a extra complicated area there. But other than that, that's all you really need to know as far as journal entries for cash dividends. So keep studying hard. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Happy studying.